So now I only write stories that wake me up in the middle of the night and make me go grab my laptop. If it doesn't make me do that, I don't write it. Can you take us all the way through your writing process? <laughs> um, it's changed a lot. Before, I think my writing process was more, I had an idea and then I wanted to take a really good look at the two main characters and then branch off from there. With, and I would always write like random scenes. Like these are the must you know, have scenes in the script because that's what ultimately made me think about the, the, the story. I carried that with me for a while, but now it's not so much that. And it's because I've, I've made enough films where I know what goes into making one and just starting at the writing standpoint. So now I only write stories that wake me up in the middle of the night and make me go grab my laptop. If it doesn't make me do that, I don't write it. If there's something that happens and I'm like, you know what, that's it, I, I gotta sit down, I gotta nail this. And the reason is because, you know, as we've spoken about before, that passion. If, if what you have in here isn't, it, it doesn't wake you up in the middle of the night for this project, then I don't know how possible it is. Like you're gonna have to fight so hard to make it to the end. So for me, it starts with, does this thing wake me up in the middle of the night? Is this the only thing I can think about right now? And if it is the only thing I can think about, what am I thinking about right now? Why do I wanna write this? What is it saying about me? And I start with that. And then what I do is ultimately, something is going on around me that's making me feel this way and oftentimes it's music. So then that song is on repeat, 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 repeat. I'm writing a story right now called uh, Moon and the Stars. And it's a story about love, but not romantic love. I mean, there's romantic love in it, but it's, it's more about the real concept of love. Like when you really love someone, what you're willing to do for them. What does it really mean for you to really love someone? And uh, believe it or not, the, I, I can't get this story out of my head and I, I'm already, we've already set it up to start production in, in 2022. The song that I have on repeat is, uh, what is the guy's name? Uh, Weekend and his song, Save Your Tears. I don't know if you've heard that song, but I just have it on repeat and I just write and I write and I write and I'm just so obsessed with the story. I'm so obsessed with the character's journey and at every time I stop, because I always say, you know, find the perfect scene and stop. And then when I stop, I go back and I think about all the technical stuff, you know? And I start to make notes for myself. Okay, when you go back to rewrite, make sure you think about this and think about this and think about this. And then when I sit down the next day to write it, that song goes on. And by the way, I, I don't know if this is a thing for every song, but on YouTube, you can search the song and loop. And then it'll come up with somebody who's made like a two hour loop of the same song over and over and over. And I just hit play and I just, and I just, I, and I know what the objective is for every scene. So I sit down, I'm looking through my notes and I'm like, okay, this is my objective for today. I need to do this for these previous scenes and then the new scenes have to be about this. It has to be a point to every scene. I can't just sit down like I did before and just write a scene and hopefully some way find some sort of connect, you know, some kind of connective tissue for the rest of the story. I have to know the point of the scene and who's making the point and why is this person the best person to make this point? Or why is this event the, the event that needs to happen now? You know, and, I, and I, that's how I kind of structure each scene. But I go back and make sure it fits the story as a whole. And I just do that all the way through. And, mm -hmm. When you say that you, you what, if it wakes you up in the middle of the night, are you already up for something else? And then you're like, you know what, this one part, I've just got to write this down. Or how does that work? If it, Let's say it's two in the morning on a Tuesday mm -hmm. and you just happen to wake up. What's mm -hmm. your process? Are you going to a laptop? It all depends, it all depends. Uh, if I am trying to not wake up the cat or my <laughs> wife, you know, then it's gonna be going into the, into the living room where you know, my office is and you know, sitting down at the computer and just, you know. But then there'll be times where maybe I get hit with inspiration at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. and the sun's probably starting to come up, it's okay if I grab the laptop and, you know, from the bed, you know. So I'll do it that way. But, but usually I, I feel something and I have to get up and I have to write and I have to complete this script. 
you know, and, and it happens with, it only happens when, now because I think I've, I've allowed myself to surrender to whatever that, that thing is inside you, that intuition that tells you now is the time. I think that well, someone, someone said a while back where, you know, writing is a profession and you have to sit down at the keyboard at a certain time and then you get up from that computer at a certain time because it's your job to write, it's your career, and you're professional. That's okay. I, I, I get that. I get that. But if you are a person who you have multiple films in various stages of production, maybe nine to five isn't something I can do because I'm still editing this one. I'm still handling the promotional stuff for this one. I'm doing interviews over here for that one. I can't just sit at a computer from nine to five, right? So I write when the inspiration hits me. And oftentimes it is in the middle of the night. It's, it's in that moment where you, you kind of wake up or you're about to go to sleep, that little, that little area. I don't know what it is about that time, but it's like, oh, there it is. And then you just, and you punch, you know, you, you sit there and you punch the keypad until you get it out of your system, you purge it out of your system. And then you go back and you, you read it and you make sure you got everything. Okay, I get everything. Okay, cool, let me write my notes. And that's just my notes for what to do when I come back to it. And how does it tie back into the rest of the story? Just making sure that it stays fresh. Because when you get that feeling and you put it on paper, you sometimes forget certain details. So you make sure I make sure I want to write it down and then I go back. But yeah, I believe that you you have to surrender to that that urge, that desire to get up right now, because you 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 feel that this needs to be on the page at this moment. I don't believe that's something you can force. My best writing has been when I felt that urge. Are you sensitive to the moon? I don't know. Oh, okay. Because you used it's called moon and stars or whatever. So oh, oh, it's moon M U N E and stars S oh. T A R R S. Okay. And okay. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> so maybe a, it's the moon a really was affecting you or something. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's funny. It's it's a uh, it's a story that when I describe it, people go, "Well, where's the love story?" But it, it's it's a story about this um, eighteen forty two, um, this child, she's 16, six years old, six year old prodigy from Beijing. And she's taken through a portal by this guy named Igun and the Order of Fenu. And they take her to a place where uh, love wilts and hope goes to die. And they take her here and then the story picks up in this day and age. And there's a guy who's going through a breakup and he's trying desperately to get back with his fiance. And he's been having these visions since he was a kid of, you know, various catastrophes. And this one girl is always in his dreams. And one day when he's just at his bottom, the portal opens up and she comes through. And she tells him that he's the only, like, Egon and the Order of Fenu are coming to basically destroy life as we know it, and you are the only hope. And the guy who's had no desire to do anything in his life other than be with this woman over here um, now has a new mission in life. And ultimately, the woman that he is in love with who just doesn't want to be with him right now, she, she's also enlisted to help him in this fight to save the universe. And throughout all of it, what he has to learn is what, what is love truly? Because love, he thought, was showing someone how much you want to be with them so they'll want to be with you. But truly, it's, it's having enough... Um, love for this person to only want the best for them even if the best for them isn't you you know that's all you want is you want to see the best for this person and that's the lesson that he's trying to learn throughout this movie and that's ultimately the lesson that helps him uh to be successful at saving the world and the universe wow but in all of that that just came from I don't know what it was. It was something happened and it just made me evaluate love and what we think of it as as people, even healthy people, like what we think about love. 
And I was just like, man, so many people have it so backwards. So backwards. They, or they love a person because of how the person makes them feel. And it's like, that's not love. That's, it's, you know, it's something, <laughs> but, but it ain't love. Um, and it, it, that's, that's what really wakes me up is, is, you know, whenever I find some other example of it and I'm like, oh, why isn't that in the script? And then it's like, oh, and then this person does this and this event happens and I'm just constantly jumping up in the middle of the night or early morning and plugging in more pages. And it's all coming from a place of, of uh, passion, but also truth and, and honesty, which I believe truth and honesty are two very different things. But, um, you know, it's coming from a place of truth and a place of honesty and, and uh, building this story. And those are the stories that I'm trying to tell now versus how I used to tell stories. I used to tell stories, it was very stream of consciousness and it was whatever it was supposed to be and then it was done. And now I put more thought into making sure the stories are just honest. They're coming from an honest place. Even if you don't agree with the message, even if you don't agree with the characters, it's coming from a place of honesty. Yeah, I was wondering what, what is the difference between writing honesty and writing truth in your screenplay? Um, I think truth is a fact. Honesty is the feeling. I think honesty is your intent. Okay. If you, I've met many people who are super honest, but their facts are so screwed up. <laughs> that is not the truth. That is not what happened. But you can tell a person truth and not be honest also. You can tell facts and omit certain things that don't fit your narrative, and that's being dishonest. Yet, you're still being truthful. Okay. So. Which would you rather have in a story, truth or honesty? Honesty. I think, I think honesty in a story is, is better than the truth. But I, I aspire to have both. 